Hello everyone and welcome back to ASFC Chemistry where I'm just going to take you through really briefly the different alkanoate salts. So these are the carboxylate salts that you can get um, when you react a carboxylic acid with something like sodium hydroxide or magnesium metal for instance. And there's just a little bit of confusion occasionally with how to name these. So the easiest example I can think of at the moment is sodium methanoate, which is on the screen at the moment for you. And this is obviously the written way of um, putting its name, ethanoate just there. And we've also got a diagram. Now the bit I've underlined just in red for you there is specifically referring to this bit on the uh, left of the diagram just below. And you can see the ethan part of this is the number of carbons here. So that's one, two carbons that are inside the chain that connect to the sodium. And you must be really clear in the exam to show that this is an ionic bond. They get really narky, especially OCR, if you show a covalent bond line like all the others between the oxygen and the sodium. Now all you need to do to name others is literally take the chain name just like you've got here and then put O8 at the end of it. That's all you need to do. So if you had a prop chain, it would be propanoate. If you had an oct chain, it would be octanoate. That's all you need to do. Don't overcomplicate it. The only other thing I can say that could be an issue, something that could trick you up in the exam, is just to keep an eye on the metal that's involved. Because here, for, for of course, we've got um, a sodium, which is a group 1 metal, and so it's just going to be 1 plus, and so therefore I just need one of the carboxylate salt ions, the ethanoate ion in this case, to make sure that that formula balances. However, in the exam, you may be given something like magnesium, and in which case you would need two lots of this ethanoate ion to make sure that the formula balances. Just like you would for any other ion combination in chemistry, you would need to make sure that the ions equal each other. What they could do to try and trick you, for instance, though, is use a dicarboxylic acid in the first instance, and then you end up with a dicarboxylate salt, but you wouldn't be expected to name one of those because that's quite a complicated example. So let's have a look at another version of this which does involve a group 2 metal. Okay, so here's another example. This is magnesium methanoate, and you can see the formula here, um, a little bit of a mix between skeletal and uh, structural formula just here, uh, but that's okay for the exam unless they specify a specific formula, of course. Um, and you can see here, what I've done is I've put it in brackets, put a two on the outside, um, I've kept the charge of the anion inside there, and I've also kept the charge on the outside, just to make it really clear. But I think what's more important for this one is not to lose focus on the fact that it is just ethan O8. So just as I said before, all you do is take the carbon chain and you put O8 on it. You don't have to use locator numbers for this at all. Um, just treat it like a carboxylic acid group. It's assumed as carbon 1, um, surrounded by the oxygens there. Now, what's more important for this one as well is, look at how I've written the formula underneath just here. I've written it without the charges, and I've put the two outside the brackets, which you can see here, and then at the end I've listed the metal. Now, that's probably the clearest way you could write this out in the exam, because here you can see I've systematically picked my way through. I've gone CH3, COO, and then I've closed off the brackets. It's very clear what I mean that to be inside, as well, alongside the magnesium there. It's obvious that this isn't a covalent bond, because I've listed this in a structural line style format. I think this is probably the easiest way to represent it in the exam and I would really encourage you to do it that way unless they specifically asked for a displayed formula diagram. In which case you could do a variation of the one above. Just make sure that you show every atom and every bond if it asks for displayed. I hope that clears up how to name some of these uh, carboxylic salts which can be found in buffer solutions or in the reaction between a weak acid and a strong base or an alkali for instance. I'll leave you to the rest of the playlist and until then, happy revising.